question is, uh, to the consumer's office, why do they have a license now? You know? So, again, I went, I went through the process of going, I know this is some notes that um, our planner shared with me, and I shared also with, with uh, your chair, Madam Chair, uh, related to the history of this uh, location having an alcohol license. So, I'm just going to read them through. Uh, on May 27, 2005, ZA approved a uh, CUB for sale and dispensing of beer and wine only for off-site consumption for a term of three years. And uh, we'll take it all the way to 2008, right? Starting in 2005. On November 5th, 2009, the CA accepted a withdrawal they had submitted, right? Uh, a CUB application. But then they approved the conditional permit for the car wash, right? Okay. All right, then, July, June, uh, 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 26, July 26, 2012, the CA approved the COB for sale and dispensing of beer and wine only for offsite consumption for another four year term. So I was looking for 2015. Right? But there was a public hearing. Uh, June 21st, 2011. Right? At uh, the So there was a public hearing. Uh, out of there, there were six speakers, including the applicant, who were in favor of the conditional use, okay, or in opposition. On top of that, there were two petitions submitted. One petition in opposing the project of Adam, the other petition to support 185 signatures were submitted. So, I think from that point, from 2011, I guess, I'm going to be honest, you know, we have, we're just going back in our records, because I wasn't on staff at that time, and then also our planning deputy just came up with her like eight months ago, so we're going back to figure out what happened uh, with this, because that was something I was like, when I first started with our uh, permit. So, I know that's okay, we were already talking about if you need to monitor and digital. They have a, a mechanism where you, know, you have to ask the register to open and to access the, the fridge more often. So I know they have cameras. I know they address some of the safety, public safety concerns that are related to that. Uh, but I know LAPD, you know, we're trying to work with them to figure out, hey, be vigilant, make sure that people are not coming out the hall on the side or anything like that. Uh, so we haven't received any complaints office if I receive any complaints of people hanging out or anything, or anything like that. Uh, but we are aware that you know, it's a concern if it would happen, but we have not received any complaints related to that. You know, I mean, we're here to make up in the Yeah. And if the community wants that type of thing, there, that's okay. Yeah. The problem is, you don't get notified yeah. to be able to have that transparency. And so that alone strikes me as uh, them avoiding this for whatever reason. Yeah. And my biggest concern is I know Anthony and Joe Montano must have known that. And, and I'm surprised they didn't come to us that they were against it. They're against it. I mean, there I'm, is a lot of reasons why I'm not going to vote based on hearsay or what assumptions. I, I can't, I'm not going to vote on that. I'm not going to get you to answer your question. Right. But, you know, I think we're here to get an assessment of what really happened. And maybe we're going to vote for it. Yeah. For us. Because, I mean, we can't have. There's no point in this committee to exist if, you know, people like, like that are avoiding coming to this committee. Yeah. No, I mean, and that's something why it's just, like, something since I've been in, in this position with a council member, we've always asked folks that come in with 
applications, anything having to do, come in, come, do outreach, come here, land use committee, that's where the gentleman was here with the recycling center, as was here, because we asked them. We cannot take a position or have anything to say about the specific item if you haven't been to the, to the community or this case, the land use committee. So, because at the end, like you said, Mr. Marquez, it's about what the community wants. If you really want it, then why do you support something like that, right? So, all right. Related to the the timeline yes. of the uh, yeah. The timeline for the, uh, the yeah. I was told okay. there was a new license that was done in the uh, end of July, and then they were going to do the the last year. So they're not here, and that stirred up a lot of concerns. So I contacted the senior lead officer at that time, yeah. uh, and they got some information. Because they had the officer for that area, the casino, officer casino, yeah. Here. Okay, so I was told this is by ABC. Shell applied on January 23rd, 2013 for a new, it was a new application. When in 2013? January 23rd, 2013. And then I was told notification was sent to residents within 500 feet of the business. Liquor license was issued on July 15th, 2013. The top prime, yeah, it's exactly, very different from what you were you saying. It, it happened so fast, and that's what I understand. The senior lead officer was very actively involved making sure that the people were there looking at it. You can't even tell me the period. It's amazing. I haven't spoken to Vice yet, yeah. but how did this one slip through? I know you're saying there's a history to it, but the research I did is you can back with that history. Um, so this is from ABC, and this is... Did they have a, a specific reference number or case number? Yes, well, they gave you the liquor license yeah. number, which is a 20-521-426. Um, so I'm going to take public comment for a moment, because I know Mr. Pacheco lives near, you know, near that area, and I'm sure he has uh, something to say about this. So, um, Mr. Pacheco, can you share your... Yeah. I guess one of the things that I remember is because Anthony was on a call, he was the president of the and he told me that he had actually gone against, to speak against the license. But at the time, he, he tried to put a, uh, an appeal okay, to the decision, but was not allowed to, so therefore he still, because he knew that he was on the legal council, he could not, he was the city, he could not make an appeal. So he put his father in. So I'm wondering, where is that in the record? There has to be that in the there record. There has to be. Okay. Right? Okay. So okay. that's missing in the record. Number two, when we bought the liquor license at uh, the 7-Eleven on East Lake, what happened there is that 7-Eleven put in an application, then withdrew it based on the fact that we protested. Okay? Then, immediately thinking that we went to sleep, they put another application. But the law is very, very specific, and I'm glad I got a judge involved. So we, you have to wait at least one year before you make an application again. And so, when 7-Eleven when thought we had gone to sleep, we came back and said, no, you can't do that, and we send in another complaint, and that's when the ABC backed off. And to date, 7-Eleven has not applied again, because I think they finally realized on East Lake, in Broadway, okay? So this, but at the, during the time that we were fighting that, we were, we were given the idea that the police did not want any more licenses, as well as, because I was also there for another hearing, the councilman was going to make sure there was going to be no more licenses issued until there was a reduction of licenses in the area. So somewhere along the line, we were told the truth. By someone. There was, there was one other, right down the street here, there was a little market that had to go. The neighborhood council did not give them the approval to have to get a license. Although they did not 
that the local store down the street here was the same one that they hired to put their license was the same one as the sales case as over on the Huntington and Monterey Pass Road. African American gentleman, I think the name escaped me. And Mr. Pacheco uh, was part of the board too, but uh, I, I firmly believe that that person was the same person that at the time period, when it used to be the policy was there, he defined a, a, a license within the district and to be able for sale. A lot of times what was being put in that time period was people trying to buy an existing license within, within the area, especially the Hollaback area. Okay? So what concerns me really seriously on this issue here is that, and, and with all due respect to any supposed scare tactics, there was a failure in procedure here. Even Captain Baeza admitted that at the Hollaback CPAP meeting when this issue was broached during the public comment section of their, their meeting. Okay? They were not happy. It's actually liquor like the uh, number of beer and wine licenses has gone down to be between 20 and 30 from the 249 level that was stated to us in the past. Somewhere along the line here, nothing slipped through. And when something like this slips through, I mean, you can't help but think that there was something nefarious involved in how that, that went through. Seriously, that issue and the sense of proximity with the locations there, I would think community, the objective community members would, would want to appeal that to the ABC on um, trying to see what can be done to remedy that situation. I think all of this merits an investigation, because way back to what the question Jorge Garcia asked to you about, whether we were, it was mandatory to get neighborhood council opinions, I could easily empower, if I'm a business owner and I want to get a liquor license, I could sponsor a, a meeting, get 50 like-minded individuals, and that would suffice for a community meeting, okay? Yep. And in that way, that's how something like this could slip through the cracks, okay? That's why an adjusted body is the best place to take this. Now, what I would like to see, and this is possible to say those are public documents that were submitted as part of the meeting process, I would love to see the petitions for and again, so we kind of have an idea who were the parties involved in this issue here, because that would that would help us out here. But the fact that when I walked in there, okay, and I look at this place, and then I see the cabinet with the 12 packs, six packs, then, more importantly, I see a food stand, you know, like a food counter, right? Like you want to buy a slice of pizza, and there's singles for sale behind the food counter. I don't think that was part of the agreement as it was cited in some of the things that you were reading. I don't think the uh, singular beer for sale, okay, behind the counter, does not meet the requirements that were being, that were being read in your report. And that would be a breach of the license between the right there and then. But just came back to the fact that this place just came out of nowhere to get the license, narrates a further investigation, and I think the parties here not only include the neighbor council, but LAPD, okay, the council office, and eventually getting it up to the level of ABC in the state of California, because, I mean, yeah, that Ms. Kellogg eloquently to say that the beer company, the liquor companies are not going to starve for a lack of business in one, one of those locations. Especially on that corner where you could probably throw a softball. I have the floor, sir. Thank you. Yeah, you could throw a softball and literally hit a liquor store right by the elementary school, and you could throw and hit the principal market across the street, okay? And so, I mean, and then you go down the street towards, um, towards Topaz, you got another liquor store down there, a long staff liquor store there. What so, do you do? No, I would like to I would really the market. Okay. Um, what, Mr. Woods, is, is Mr. Woods also a representative of this? Excuse me? Mr. Woods. He's a huge, uh, he's a broker, uh, agent. You don't know if he was. Well, I have a minute for two presentations that are given to you, 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 to
And Mr. Woods represented not only the deaf people that we were talking about, but also the sort of story. In both cases, they came to the conference office and presented their plans to open. Now, I don't, again, unless they found a way of not coming to you and just taking the license, you know, that's even worse. It's a conference office they know about. And I just want to mention one other thing. Mr. Joe Manzano was on the land use side at that time. And he stated, he stated on his video station, that the land use board was not going to be able to do it. And he stated, we do need more licenses. He's right, though. We do. You know, to correct you, we're not talking about whether they should have a license or not. Oh, okay. Our main concern is that they never came to us. Okay, but somehow they were avoiding us for whatever reason. Okay, they don't understand that. We're just a big firm to represent the community. So I'm sorry, I'm not sure that you don't misunderstand what we're doing. Thank you. Maybe they have
to make sure that our people on our side are treated equally and fairly and justly, like any other part of the, the city, then we will be protected. Thank you. Um, okay, one more public comment because you would bring the traffic. Madam Chair, print of order. Run seems to die. I think there's only one public comment per person on the agenda item to say let's go on the motion. Funny you should bring that up after he had his second and with all you and I don't get along. Being prejudiced on this. I would take care of this. I would agree with that. You should have never opened your mouth. Okay. Uh, you know, for these projects and many other projects that come to the neighborhood council, a lot of these companies are required to come to the one of the 95 neighborhood councils throughout the city of Los Angeles, depending on where that project ends and whatever project it is. In this case, it's a beer project, okay? They don't need the approval or disapproval of this or any neighborhood council for that project to go forward. They're just required to bring it to them. In that neighborhood council, any one of those 95 neighborhood councils has the option to go for it or against that given project, okay? I'm looking at it from a business point of view. Just like this young man brought his project a little earlier, the one standing in front of me with a Cal State L later, okay? It just brings more money into the area. It doesn't bring more drunkards, more alcoholics, and you can take your kids anywhere you want, by any liquor store, you've probably been by them a million times with your kids and many other people. It doesn't hurt or take anything away from them because it's a different lifestyle that you're living. You're not focusing and telling, oh, there's a the liquor store there. They're the bad guys. They're the devil. You just go on with your life, you know? And so I think that this, we owe this to this company to push this thing to go through. There's been so many liquor places that have closed down, <laughs> liquor stores, bars, you know where we have our new post office, that new building where they sell whatever it was? That used to be a two-story building. You might remember that when you first came here. I've been here longer than you. And that used to be a bar downstairs. Over here on this side of Huntington can drive that in the corner where there's a little store with some wavy things like that over in the thing. That used to be another bar. And there's been so many bars in LA 32 that have closed. And you know, it's close because of bad business in those particular areas. So one more, this or that. There hasn't been any problems in the Shell Station whatsoever. They've already done it and put themselves, and you've got a new owner in that Shell Station. They bought all of that. The other owner, long gone. Thank you very much. Okay, so you gave more than two minutes to Ugo.
And this has to go with the type of community you want to have, okay? You want a community that follows standards, follows the protocol, and, and really takes the time to engage the community and discerning who these business owners are, what kind of benefit you bring in, because you have a good valid point. And we brought this back to USC about maybe, you know, when you students that are living on campus now, whether it's shopping locally, the response from USC was, well, we have a shuttle service, we take not out Hambra, okay? So what does that tell you about your community? Can you be focused more about the, the acquisition or acquisition of beer and wine outlets, okay? Or can you be more concerned about bringing some quality merchants, quality businesses into the community that are going to enhance the livability of your community, okay? So, with all due respect to comments that I made earlier, there is enough beer and wine licenses in this call and back to business. 20 less than 249. I don't think anybody's going to have to drive too far to buy a 12 pack or a 6 pack or a type of adult beverage, okay? What should be the concern of this committee, first of all, is how the process was swept aside here and this place, this uh, new um, sales venue became established, you know, without the, without the, without the, the notification made to this court. And that's where we need to draw the line. When these future applicants come here, we've got to have a protocol in place that's respected. If we don't stand and draw a line here, then people are going to disrespect any future process that comes out of this community this court. I got a hold of um, the agenda for land use or uh, yeah, land use. It's NOC trying to solve this, this uh, development. And at the very top, it, was, it said that they were wanting a license. Now, I don't know what the outcome was, but my understanding is no beer and wine. Yeah, it's definitely no beer and wine for this one. I'm afraid that they might, they might just go ahead and get it in, in a few years. So um, The owner, we talked to the owner, he's a member of the community, he attends the free and I'm not trying to put it this way, but free and church on Easter. So he's, he's uh, Mr. Sun Lim. Um, so he, he, he knows, he wants to get involved with the community, so I... You know, if I have a suggestion, I, you know, I can invite him to the land use committee to talk about, you know, this is uh, grand opening and you know, the expectations. And, um, so, you know, that eases that. You know, but then again, just because he's not, just because he's not. Yeah, keep an eye out. Yeah, keep an eye out, but just because they don't have an alcohol license now does not preclude from them not applying for one. But then I do understand what you're saying in terms of being vigilant and being open to that. But again, if he is willing to come to the land use committee and then hear from the community to say, hey, that's something that's not accepted, we want to work with you and make sure that your business stays open, but without an alcohol license. You're talking about a bad spot. We have a motel in the Yes. Very good. Yes. There's horses yes. hanging out outside. Yes. There's shoes going on. The nasty yeah. as well. Yeah. I mean, you've got every element there. All you need to do is add fuel to the fire. Yeah. No, of course. No, we're, we're aware. We we're glad that there was no market. Just to have to walk down. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I just want to read it off. Motion for eligibility. To work in conjunction with the and the overseeing the liquor license against the other and must report back to the general So every month you have a report of any new pending or uh, Is that a motion? Uh, that's a motion. Do we need to get a second before you continue talking about it? Go ahead. 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 Go 
that she's stating okay. the motion. Yes. And then she will ask something to, like, to the effect of, I, I would like, like to motion. entertain I a motion. Your, 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 uh, yes. I want to explain the motion so that it's basically reporting back to the general work of the community examiner. Yes. And then you have pending application. So we are all in the loop and at the same time working with CD14 and what so is.
Uh, I, I would I would have the ad hoc committee. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Have some idea of your protocol, okay? Where the floor? Well, I mean, so this, is the 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 port, this is the board discussion. Once he's done, we'll go back to you. Right, but this is board discussion. I'm responding to a board member, Mr. Martin, said if the chairperson chooses to allow it to, he can do that, okay? Uh, we're having a board dialogue here. We gave public comment, and we're moving on with board dialogue. Yeah. Okay. Thank I wasn't you. Dying. Excuse me, Jorge. Jorge. What? This is scary. Okay. This is not. Me, or Jorge. Chill. Okay. Well, Thank you. I, I Excuse me. Okay. Right. Go ahead. Take it. I'm going to make a motion again. Can I wait one minute? Are you okay if I. I want to acknowledge that he doesn't need to ask for me to vote for you. I'm the one that asked for me to vote for you. Motion LA32NC to create an ad hoc committee composed by members of the land use to work in conjunction with CD14 LAPD right ABC over to the liquor license within LA32. Must report back monthly to the general report. Report monthly back to the land use committee. This is a committee. It's the same people. Yes, same. The two is the same. What's the difference? If, if only land use people can be the ad hoc with the land use committee, they're both the same. The one is the same. So what is that? They're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not inhibited by, by time okay. schedule. Well, do I have a second on the motion? I have a second. Wait, wait. I want to share my concerns with the motion. One is that you're recommending a half committee, but so my question was, is it only is it only the um, land, use, land use committee members who've been part of it? Because my um, usually a half committee, we tend to have more people involved. Okay, That's the and idea. the thing is, um, it's only board members that are allowed to be in it, but stakeholders should be notified of these meetings. I know um, it was said that we have to comply with Brown, Brown Act, but a half committees. If you don't have the stakeholders, you don't have to post it. Exactly. That's a problem. I, exactly. I, that's, I just wanted to clarify that. That's, that's right? Me, yeah. So, so, well, I know. so, I wasn't done yet. Okay. I, I, I keep getting interrupted. So, so, you know, to me, it, 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 it's almost redundant for only land use committee members to be part of this alpha committee. I would recommend for you to open it up to other board members. You might have people, other board members who are not interested in it, it would just be free. But at least you open it up and you have the opportunity. And my recommendation would be that you do follow Brown Life policy just so that stakeholders are notified because the spirit, I believe the spirit is to have community input. But to have community input, stakeholders need to be aware of the meeting. So we have three minutes left. Okay. Two minutes left. So um, we're going to move on with this motion because we can always make amendments at the board level to, to make this change. So I thank you, but what are we going to do? We're we'll calling for the vote. What? Call for the vote on the motion. You're going to what? Vote for the vote. Vote for the vote. The one you need to call for the vote is you, not him. Mm -hmm. When someone else calls for the vote and uses that verbiage, it means something. Uh -huh. No, you're not, a, you're not doing it right. I may be out of order, but I'm correct on what I'm saying. It's too late, it happens when you should it not happen. You're right. You're correct. Any board about, uh, you know, the for the I'm going to go to item five. Any board member announcements? Yeah, one minute. Can you sing the meeting to a quarter till? No. I think we're done here. And so we're going to do any board member announcements? Um, board member, um, one announcement. It was the, um, short. the upcoming... Uh, okay. Um, we're gonna do. You need to call for a German second if somebody. Call for a German second. Second. Mm -hmm.